I guess when we're talking about um, the newer artists, uh, mm. Wom- Wombat's one of the dudes in Oz that's really popping um, at the moment. Mm. And he did a grime cl- uh, grime clash recently mm-hmm. with yep. uh, Mr. Righty, another artist yep. here. Now, I'm not sure how familiar you are with you know that particular clash, but mm. to my understanding, uh, grime is... Uh, you know, originally a UK thing. Yeah. Um, now, I guess my question to you is, what's your take on grime coming out of Australia and what did you think about that particular grime clash? Okay, so grime... I think it's important to just give this little bit of context. Grime, I didn't start listening to grime till about 2014, 2015, which is quite late for a lot of people. Yeah. I didn't grow up listening to grime. Um, I listened to certain grime tracks, but I wouldn't say I was involved in grime. Um, And so I have a newer knowledge of grime and I definitely have gone back and done my history on grime. That's something I've definitely done, but I didn't grow up listening to it. So um, listening to this clash, I mean, I was massively excited for it. I remember talking about it, doing previews almost like this is my prediction. This is what I think could possibly happen. You know, I was I was bigging it up for a long time. Mm. Um, and then yeah that clash dropped and I did my reaction on it and I said to a certain extent I'm disappointed Um, and I think that was due to the amount that it was hyped up I think if that clash dropped out of nowhere I think people would have been more accepting of it but obviously uh, Righty obviously stumbling and choking and then reading off of his phone I think for a lot of people it was looking at that and it was like oh it was painful to watch almost And and I felt sorry for Righty man because I know he's a dope MC I know he is. And I mean, I checked him out on previous ciphers and things like that um, from the little content that he did have up. And I was like, you know what, right? He could have one by here. I was openly saying that. Mm. Um, and so for it to go down the way it did, and then it was like, did Wombat do really well? Or did it just seem better because he had little to no competition? So, there, you know, there was a lot of talking points around it. And I was kind of, um, I felt bad for those guys because they put a lot of work into it. Fracture put in a lot of work setting up that event and then for it to be widely kind of laughed at by a lot of people. I felt I felt sorry for them, man. Um, obviously, it would have the, the ideal situation would have been it being so close to the point where you have fan bases arguing over it and it becomes like an instant classic. I think that would have been the best case scenario and it just didn't work out that way. Um, but I mean, I think it was a good thing that they did that. I think it is. And I mean, for them to be the first ones uh, in Australia to put on a grime clash like that, I think it's a, a big point in history, definitely. But I think it will only go down as a big point in history if they continue to do events like that. I don't want mm. people to be put off like, oh, well, the first one wasn't as successful as some people may have liked. So uh, there's no point. I think people need to do it again. And I think they need an undercard. I think we need a whole host of battles. And I think that there's a lot of things. It's easy to say afterwards what they yeah. should have, could have, and would have. I mean, that's easy to say. I mean, like I said, shout out to both those artists for actually willing you know, to compete like that. Um, and shout out to everyone who was a part of that event and putting it on. But yeah, th- I, it, there's no secret that it disappointed a lot of people because there wasn't really much of a battle. It was kind of yeah. just one bat rehearsed and one bat delivered. Uh, yeah, it, it's, it's difficult, <laughs> but yeah. And then, so when you have a situation like that, um, you know, can you take a guess as to why uh, someone might come through with you know, not the greatest performance uh, because you would think as an artist that was, like you said, it was pretty hyped up. It was like highly anticipated. So I'm not a rapper, but I would imagine that that's something that you really polish and prepare and practice and, you know, execute. Um, Any thoughts as to why, you know, for Mr. Righty in that battle, that just wasn't the case? You know, there's so many things that could go into it. He easily could have woke up this morning, uh, that morning, and not been feeling well. He could have woke up that morning and found out maybe a relative passed. You know what I mean? It could be something that happens just in life that throws you off. From an artist standpoint, it could have just been a lack of preparation. He could have been thinking, oh, this is going to be easy. I don't I don't know. I honestly don't know. And I haven't spoken to Righty, so I can't give uh, an exact answer to, to why he perhaps stumbled. maybe he was prepared maybe he was just ready to go and then the camera switched on the beat coming and he just froze up mm. it happens i mean i don't know it could be a million different things i will i will say that one thing it could be though is yeah it could have just been life 
you, it could have been Jay-Z in that room. It could have been Skepta in that room. And maybe life just happened beforehand, you know? And so you don't know what it, it, it could have been. I hope it in, in some ways it was just something that was completely out of his hands. I hope it wasn't just him being ignorant and a lack of preparation. I doubt that very highly. Um, but you could just tell almost before they even spit their first lyric you could see wombat just seemed hungrier for it mm. um and you could see and you could see right he just didn't seem right from the minute that first line come out you could just see it wasn't right maybe it was a case of that maybe he missed that first drop and because of that it just his mind was gone from there i don't know it could be a thousand different things and i guess we won't know until we hear it from the horse's mouth himself and then so do you think that first of all that grime clash made it uh on the radar for the people in the UK, first of all? And if so, do you think that that kind of would make people in the UK look at Australian grime clashes and be like, eh, you know what? Not really going to check that shit out no more. It's an interesting point. I mean, I don't know of anyone personally, and obviously it's not like I know the whole of the UK, but um, I don't know anyone who checked out that clash. Um, I mean, when I uh, talk to certain people, they'll be like, oh, I know you do Australian reactions. Have you reacted to One Four or have you reacted to Chilling It? They're the two. They're the only two names I've heard organically myself. Um, so I didn't expect anyone to be like, "Oh, Chaz, did you check out that Australian Grand Clash?" <laughs> um, so no one that I personally know uh, checked that out. Um, I don't think it reached many people here. It didn't trend. Uh, I didn't see it at all on social media. Again, when Chilling It did a fire in the booth, when One Four did their thing. Um, that reached UK social media. I seen that trending. Whether it was a meme or whether it was serious, people were, you know, it was still getting around. Um, I didn't see nothing of it here myself. And if anyone did check it, yeah, perhaps it wouldn't have been the greatest first impression. If my first impression to Australian grime was that clash, maybe we wouldn't be here now. And that's just the honest truth. And that sounds quite harsh to say. That mm. does sound quite harsh to say. But at the end of the day, there's so much more to a scene than just that one clash. I think it would be unfair to represent the whole Australian grime scene off of one performance because equally so, the way that I, um, you know, sparked my interest from the Triple J cipher, maybe someone else would have checked that out and been like, oh, not for me. So, you mm. know, yeah. I don't think it reached many people here. Um, and if it did, yeah, it probably didn't have the greatest first impression, but you can't base, uh, you can't judge a scene off of one video. The, the, the lesson. Oh, yeah.